Hello, and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Steve and Adam show, and Ben, the intern. Hey, guys, what's going on? Not much, dude. How are you? Yeah, man. Uh, hanging in there. How's it Excellent. Going? Doing, our, doing our favorite Friday night thing. I mean, it's not Friday yet. Remember, we're in the future. Yeah, oh, two to one, mate. Two to one, two to one. It's, it's Saturday. <laughs> it's, it's not Friday. <laughs> okay, exactly. future man. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, hey, I wanted to run this one. I know I'm the intern. It's it's fine. Um, I promise this isn't going to be a two minute clickbait video. Once a month. Um, once a month. You once a month. Yeah, I get the I get the reins. Um, so I wanted to talk about uh, uh, something that's it's been around in uh, in the endpoint uh, space since I think June July. Uh, it's uh, proactive remediations uh, or proactive remediation scripts something really exciting. Um, I haven't actually spent a lot of time on it, but I wanted to sort of get into it now with you guys um, because I know that we did a while ago, we did uh, uh, a demo or a video on uh, deploying scripts and I just wanted to take that to the next level, the next obvious level. Um, so I reckon we should do that. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Cool. All right, let me share my screen and move Steve's face away. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm logged into the portal. Uh, actually, now before I before I go and start playing around with this stuff, I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that uh, we're kind of late to the party on this one. It, this has already been spoken about fairly heavily. There's good Microsoft documentation on this, um, and there's good community uh, documentation as well. Um, I've got a couple of uh, great blogs here that I've used uh, to get information. Hey, um, that's Jake's blog. I know that Jake, one. Jake is a good guy. Uh, and uh, and yeah, there's this lots of stuff. Yeah, you can sell stuff. It's yeah, it's it's all great. What I just really feel like, hey, if we're doing Intune.training, we should probably also do our own spin on it as well, right? Yes. So yeah, anyway, why not? We'll, we'll put, so we'll put links to all these. are we copying tonight? Uh, probably Jake. Probably Jake. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but we'll put links to all these blogs uh, in the in the comments. Should we just like read his read his blog out? Just has anyone got any music? I mean, since he's already done it, we could just turn it on Spotify and just go to town. We could, but we're not going to do that. I think that Johannes anymore. has a good one on there too. We should. Yeah, there's there's a lot. Like I honestly just search for proactive remediation in tune. You're going to find heaps. Um, By the way, Jake and Johannes, you guys both owe me a dollar now. <laughs> I thought we right, were going to a dollar. We don't take sponsorship though, there, Adam. It's so no, that's a bribe. It's a bribe. Okay, all right, all right. So look, we've, we've gone into devices and we've gone into scripts. So I just wanted to show you. So uh, I mean, this was last year, almost this time. Yeah. Uh, we did a script that basically just created a uh, check to see whether a folder existed on the root of C, and if it wasn't there, it put it in. Um, now the key thing about uh, Windows script deployment using um, Sidecar is that it only runs once. And if it's successful, it never runs again. We've done videos on how to make sure that that runs again uh, by deleting registry keys and doing all that sort of stuff. But it was always a little bit hacky. Um, the solution was only really ever meant to deploy a script and run it. Um, and then, you know, if it failed, try a couple of times. But, you know, it wasn't really meant as a uh, as a replacement for configuration managers. Uh, what is it? What is it called now? CI, I continuous Confi DCM. configuration items. Design. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it was never really meant as a replacement for that. Um, since then, obviously, uh, myself and I know a lot of other people in the community have gone have really missed uh, that CI mentality uh, when we've moved to Intune. Um, so much so that uh, if I need something to run repeatedly, I'll create a Win32 app with a script and deploy it out that way and make sure that the detection method file disappears after a while so that it'll you know it'll fail to detect and then run again but it's always again it's always been really really hacky and not by design um so product yeah it's a workaround it, it works it's not great do i feel good about it no i don't um but okay so the product of remediation allows us to sort of do this in a more uh, official way uh, one thing I wanted to show as well uh, while I'm in here, and we did talk about this on a previous video, is if we went in and created a script for Mac OS, straight off the bat, if we go example, uh, and we upload our script, we actually have an option in here called script frequency. So off the bat in uh, Mac scripts, we had the ability to make this run every 15 minutes. 
Uh, so what that would mean is that if your script had detection and remediation in it, or a way to remediate if it didn't pass, then you kind of have that proactive remediation stuff happening anyway. Um, the downside to that is that there's no reporting on this. So proactive remediation has uh, the script detection and remediation broken out so that you can do high level reporting on how many devices are failing detection and how many devices have that remediation happening. Um, so, you know, for, for all of you managers out there, um, there's more reporting that we can do. So just a quick one there, Ben. Uh, with the script frequency, yep. it's saying uh, once a week. Yeah. Can we sit there and specify which day of the week or anything associated to that? Not in the UI. Um, it's actually quite interesting. I would honestly have expected at this point that this would just be a, uh, a text file that you could type a cron uh, string in, but maybe that's too advanced uh, for, for what they're doing. Um, I yeah, actually I mean, don't know. For Max, so. Yeah, um, but I don't know what that means. So I I can only assume that if you looked at the um, the back end of the data, that potentially it would be creating a cron job. And I reckon it would just be the first day of the week. So whether that's yeah. a Sunday or a Monday, or like I don't know. But, yeah, there's no way to customize that. So it is very so limited. My, my thinking is that it would be every seven days from when from, the policy yeah. was assigned. Potentially, but that could be, you know, that yeah. that's not great if that if that is what it is. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so just just to show you that this concept is is already there for some things, but it's never really been there for Windows devices, which is which is crazy. Um, but it is now. So let's go in. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to replicate the uh, this script. We'll actually delete this one. I'm going to sign it before we delete it. <laughs> okay, fine. You're deleting our history, man. Sorry, I won't delete your history. I'll just delete the assignment. Because it's always best practice to remove the assignment and all of that before you actually delete it because you may go, oh, I need to roll that back rapidly. Yeah, It's always for sure. best practice to make sure you remove the assignment rather than just deleting. Yeah, my, my habit is generally to put in, like change the name of the thing and say decommissioned or something like that so that I don't go insane. Um, okay, so that's unassigned. We're not deploying that script more out insane. anymore. Yeah, more insane, more insane. Uh, okay, so let's go in and have a look at what the proactive remediation stuff looks like. So um, again, we're in the endpoint portal. I'm just going to pop over to reports. And I'm going to go into endpoint analytics, which is in preview. Just so a disclaimer on the endpoint on the preview things is just remember that they're subject to change at any point. Um, yep. So they, we yeah. generally don't see huge changes, but just saying, there's always that disclaimer, and they could be buggy. Even um, they generally do private previews before they let the public see it, but you know that's the reason that's in preview still. Let them exactly. work out the bugs. Exactly. Um, so in here, we've obviously turned uh, endpoint analytics on already to like look at this stuff. Uh, but what we're going to do is go into this uh, report called proactive remediations. And the first thing that you'll see when you go in um, is this warning. Well, it's not a warning. It's just a heads up um, that you need to make sure that you have these specific licenses. Um, I really, really like that uh, this is here because it takes the wind out of I don't know why this didn't work. And then you need to explain that, you know, you don't have the right license. It just tells you straight away, make sure you've got Enterprise E3 or, you know, all the other options. And you also so, you must be a GA uh, to confirm this. Yep. So the important thing to note there is it's Windows Enterprise is not EMS licensing. So this is an OS level license requirement, not yep. a... Um, uh, uh, EMS licensing. So yes. what this will mean is it's 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 if you're running Windows 10 Pro on it the client computer, work. this won't work, and that will be based upon the CSP right now, associated. Yeah. So right now, there's only two SKUs of Windows that this will work on. So it's Win 10 Enterprise and Win 10 uh, like education. education. Exactly. So if you if you were rolling out Pro, this is not for you. Go to the next video, uh, or look at why you're not using enterprise um, yep. is, is what I would suggest. So we're just going to confirm. Um, hopefully I'm a GA. I know I'm an intern, but I'm pretty sure I'm a GA. Yeah. Fingers crossed. 
Uh, okay, sweet. So uh, let's just have a look at what we've got in here. So it's loading. Uh, I don't have any scripts, so that's fine. We're going to create a script package. All right, we're going to call this Intune Training Folder Check. Now, the the thing, <laughs> the thing that I think, I or at least I know I will personally struggle with on this is trying to find these because you know, we're building a thing, you know, we're building actions and scripts underneath the reports node, which yeah, just is kind of a weird place for this to be. Um, I, I don't know if they'll ever move it, but it's I just would like of, to see it. Yeah, I would like to see it bogged in with the script stuff. Or more importantly, yeah. I would like to see this replace the scripts as a, as a rule because I would like my scripts to have a detection method as well or have the ability to turn that on or off. Um, you know, it's just wishful thinking, but I, that's that's where I see this scenario happening. Um, okay. Totally. Okay, so let's go in here. All right, so we've immediately hit a roadblock because I don't have the script. So we'll have to go ahead and create that, but let's just have a look at the, uh, the screen here. So we've got um, the detection script and the remediation script are broken out into two things, like I said earlier, um, which is really good because it means that both of those things are run in different stages. Um, so if the detection script passes, it's never gonna run the remediation script. So it's great, right? Um, it, it also speeds up the process. It's not gonna do yep. superfluous things if it doesn't have to. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's go in and we'll create the script uh, and the remedia, or the, de the detection script and the remediation script now. So I'm gonna pop over to VS Code. Everyone should be using VS Code. Uh, and yep. this is this script that we were deploying uh, previously um, that that Adam found, which is great. So again, we've just got this uh, variable called folder, uh, C drive engine training. Uh, in here, we're just checking to see whether that folder exists. And if it doesn't, uh, we're going to create it and then we're going to return true. Um, if there's any errors at any stage, it's going to say false. Now, this script is not going to work as the detection method um, for a couple of reasons. Um, the first one is that the way that detection scripts uh, report on pass or fail is on the exit code or the last exit code of the process of PowerShell. Um, and write host true will invariably just exit with what is what is commonly known as just exit zero. Exit zero means it, it ran exactly how it was supposed to. There were no exits, happy days. Um, similarly, if there was a problem with this, and we caught that error in our catch statement and returned false, it's still going to exit as zero because false is just a Boolean value. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to, and it's just going to exit as zero. So what we need to do is we need to rewrite this in a way that if this doesn't exist, we're going to exit as a non-zero status. So let's just say exit one. Um, but if it does exist, we're going to exit as zero. And um, there's also another problem with this script being used as a detection method there, Ben because it's doing the remediation. Yes. Exactly. So the, the key thing about detection scripts is that it simplifies what you're doing. You're just checking to see whether the thing that you expect to either be there or not be there is or isn't. If it's not, then you're going to push over to the remediation script. So it, it actually simplifies the code quite a lot. Um, but OK. Uh, so now, it well, to, sorry, yeah. So, so to that point, um, I started in Config Manager, I've started writing my detection and remediation script as the same script and just having a variable that says remediate equals true, sure. that I true or false. And then that way I only have to maintain one script. Mm -hmm. And then you just, you when you put it in the remediation um, section of the CI, you just switch it to remediate equals true. You um, totally could so, do that with this. So as well. then that way, it, 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 Sometimes it works. Sometimes it's, the scripts are completely different. You don't yeah. need to know the thing from the previous to to do the remediation and that kind of deal. But exactly, it's a. I, I like it as a simplification as well. Just being able to maintain one script. For sure. Yeah. No, that's that's true. Um, all right. So what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to get rid of this whole section. Okay. We're still going to keep everything in the try catch um, because we do want to handle like if there's an error, we want to be able to handle that, right? And we want to be able to 
potentially even if we're like if we're doing logging or whatever we're not going to do that in this case but we just we want to make sure that if there's an error we're going to handle that error the way that we want it to ha happen um, so all we're going to do in here is i'm going to follow the uh code quality uh that has been provided to me and put in capitals um typical thing an intern would say <laughs> yeah. uh yeah and i'm gonna say path is folder 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 yeah error i thought action. interns were supposed to be able to type uh no uh famously we're really bad at typing um, yeah even with those fancy mechanical keyboards and stuff yeah exactly exactly show off um nothing <laughs> nothing <laughs> okay uh so i'm just going if this path uh exists which is going to return a true then what we're going to say is write host uh hey it's there Oop, nothing and we're just going to go exit zero um else sorry let me fix that <laughs> this is non-standard i do not like it my peer script analyzer code would uh, go mental uh so okay uh, evidently if... it's not since problems aren't lighting up uh, yeah, I, I needed to rebuild my machine recently. Uh, okay, so uh, if this fails, which means the folder is not there, um, it's going to fall to our else statement. So we're just going to go write warning. No, not like that. Right, warning. Oh my god! <laughs> See, Adam, it's not just me. me. <laughs> it's not just me. It's impossible. <laughs> All right, so we're going to say it's Adam's fault, and then we're going yeah. to exit one. Okay, so if it's not there, we're going to exit. It doesn't. This doesn't matter. We don't technically have to have this code, but it's just you know for fun. Um, and we're going to exit one. Now, what we're also going to do is, if any of this code fails, we're going to catch that error, and we're going to say write warning, and we're just going to pipe out the error. So this will capture the error message. And we're also going to exit as one as well, because so we've now only got one scenario that will ever be successful. Anything else is going to fail. And we really want to make sure that that happens. Now, okay. Ben, let me ask you this. Yes. So on line three, technically, if you took out the error action silently continue and took the default action of an of just letting it error, it would it would go to catch and it would exit with one. And That's you correct. wouldn't need the else block at all. That's right. I reckon you could even turn it into a one-liner in that uh, case there, Adam. A hundred percent you could. This is just yeah. the standard way that I write it. I always try to capture this thing because I want to be able to do the bully and check myself. Um, whoa, someone just dropped something. Uh, yeah, so yes, a hundred percent. You could get rid of the error action and just handle the uh, the exit one in the catch statement. So, um, so, so what you're saying is the interns overcomplicating a script. Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. Um, poor case and everything. Yeah, perfect. bad spelling. And catch and try and capitalizing everything. Guys, I'm surprised we don't have commandlet binding at the top. There's no, yeah. there's no well, type there's no declaration on the folder. Yeah, this. I, I, I mean, don't have, I don't have my own custom classes or anything. It's it's wild. This is, this is awful, man. Okay, all right. Are, all right. are we paying you per the line? Yes, you are. It's per character, actually. Um, per type of. Um, hang on. I don't know what that was. Uh, okay. Right. So we've got our detection script. We're now going to do our remediation script. So assuming, hang on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just I'll this. edit this out, Ben. It's fine. Just no, he's ran off. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah, he's ran off trying to get them to stop. Nice. <laughs> Go hand him a six pack. Hey guys, isn't it time for a break? Sorry, my neighbors are doing something. 
we'll see how this so goes. We're on the remediation script. We're on the remediation script. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to copy the same uh, folder path because obviously, you know, we're assuming that uh, if we're at the remediation script, there was a failure. So we're going to create that folder. Um, we could make this really easy. Uh, we will make this really easy. We're literally going to say new item path is folder. Builder. Item type directory. Course and because I just don't like the output, even though we're not going to see it, and it's fine. And we're just going to make sure that we exit with zero. So we're not even going to check to make sure that it uh, succeeds. We're just going to assume that it's successful. If it you fails, put force on there. It's going to. It's going to create. It's going to create this problem. I'm, I'm just looking. I'm just comparing it to the detection method script. And it's, you guys it's gave just... me too much flack for uh, how good how good my code looked. Yeah, but so, now um, it's inconsistent, and it's like. <sighs> Uh-huh. And this is why we're losing subscribers. <laughs> this is it right here. Oh my god. Filder. Fine. Well you should have just named it Filder by now. Come on. Uh. Yeah, there you go. It's the exact same script. Um, so the downside to this is obviously we're also doing a detection method in here. So that's what I was trying to suggest here is that your remediation scripts and your detection scripts can now be simpler uh, because you're splitting that detection level out. Um, obviously, the problem here is that if either of your detection or remediation scripts are bad, then you could get into a race condition where they just constantly circle and you just get errors. and. Uh, your uh, quality is uh, questioned. Uh, okay, so let's <laughs> pop back over here. So now we've got our detection script file and our remediation. So let's upload that. Let's go uh, C drive dev community in tune training. I got two. Remediation scripts detection. And it's pretty cool because you can actually see the code in here. So, you know. The code you just that's randomly get off the and internet. That's also a thing that did not exist in the scripts thing. Yeah, um, that's correct. So that's cool. And our remediation. Again, we can see it's all there. It's happy days. Um, so we're gonna. We've got again the same as scripts. We've got the option to run this as system or user. Um, let's just run it as system by default. Um, we're not doing script signature checks because we don't have that functionality at the moment. Um, and we're always going to select yes to this because we always want to run it in the 64-bit uh, instance. Um, I understand why we should have that option, but they sh this should be by default. Okay. Um, now, I want to assign uh, this to a group, but I haven't actually created one. So let's just skip past that. I'll create it. And I'll pop over to groups and I'll create a group. Now, you guys have got naming conventions, I assume? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, we'll help you. All right, yep. cool. What is the naming convention? So we're going to start off with hash hash, so it's at the top. Mm -hmm. OK. Definitely. Yeah. And then it's going to be, uh, you have to make sure that you uh, have uh, some underscores in it. Yep. So make sure it's descriptive, in tune, remediation. Um, well, which, um, it's what the version? Final version. <laughs> is it the final? Uh, yes. OK. Yeah, we'll see. Um, um, then we need to put who did it, like job role, typically. Put your okay. name. Yeah, cool. What's your name? What's your job? Intern. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. This is this is perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and not put that in there because you guys look are at joking. this. The performance appraisal where he's gonna doesn't yeah. follow direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follows okay. direction poorly. Poorly. Very poorly. Uh, now I want to put in uh, your test device. Adam. Oh yeah, I should probably give you one of those. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> so this can this can be deployed. Hold on, let pieces. me open up VS Code to open PowerShell to open the command prompt to get to host name. Listen, no one watched the video that we took down last week, so <laughs> several people did, <laughs> and we apologize for. Wow, we had some really bad technical difficulties, and I'm um, yeah, okay. Really. Desktop dash zero six L A. Yeah, that one. Cool. And then I have um, a second one. 
Yeah. So what I was going to say here is that um, so we're deploying this to desktop, but you can deploy it to user as well. It doesn't matter. Um, it'll it'll get where it needs to go. Yeah. The other one is desktop dash s seven. No, sorry, seven si. You go. That one there. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Now these are the same or some of the same machines that we used during the initial test. Uh, they're still up and running. Cool. And I have deleted the folder off of them preemptively here, so they are not still getting those policies applied. Great. So I'm going to go back in here. I always want to go to devices to get to the thing. It's really yeah. Easy. See, right. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Even uh, to find like the, I mean, just all all this stuff. It's just it's been hard to. Ooh, so oh, so there's like actually there's, there's two default ones in there. Those because it wasn't loaded yet. That's really cool. Update style group policies. Restart stop office. Click to run service. That's awesome. So you know, um, uh, Intune people, if you're watching this, the uh, devs, you should make this um, all integrated into GitHub the same way that you're doing with the community hub and in, um, in Config Manager, so that we can share share uh, remediation scripts to the community. Completely. Really cool. um, one uh, new cool feature that we have in this uh, that we don't for script deployment is that we can exclude groups. Uh, at the moment, you still don't have that functionality, um, which is good. Oh, sorry. By the way, uh, did I miss the, the the schedule piece there as you were doing it? Uh, no, no, you did. Oh, well, I maybe I did. Let's let's remove it and we'll, we'll go through the process again. Um, so I search for this added it, and I said select. Oh, this is the same as uh, when you're uh, assigning uh, Win32 apps now. So once you go in, you've got to then go to edit and change the frequency. Oh, we can um, set time of day. Awesome. Look at that. Time and everything. OK, you so see. minimum you can do is hourly. Uh, so it's which once an hour, enough. which is totally fine. Um, so we can repeat it every hour. That's the minimum that you can run it. So there's, you're not going to have any five minute uh, proactive remediation scripts like I know I used to do in Config Manager. Every five minutes, I'd, I'd run a thing. It was it was ridiculous. Um, uh, yeah, that was so because it's, you were trying to annoy your boss. I don't know what you're talking about. So we can just do it once. Uh, we can do it hourly or daily, which is why I feel like this is going to be the successor to just script deployment because. We have that granularity now, so like, why would I just deploy, uh, you know, a single script, doing it that way? Um, so let's do it hourly, because it's nice and easy. But as as Steve said, we can basically build a cron job out of this, um, UTC time, that sort of stuff. I think I think it's pretty cool. Um, but we'll just do hourly for now, and we can see the schedule is hourly, and we'll just hit review and save. So just something I just thought of as we did this. Um... So, I mean, basically, sky's the limit. If you can put it in PowerShell, you can probably do it here. Yep. The only um, limiting factor here would be a payload of some sort and uh, being able to tie tie into that in some way. Um, but I could see it being something like you package up your payload in a Win32 app or something uh, separate, and then your detection script would look for the existence of the payload before attempting to do the remediation and execute the thing you needed to do, um, you know, that kind of deal. But I mean, this really does open the door to kind of give you the Swiss Army knife option for, yeah, look, I can't do it through natively in the console or I've already got scripts that do these things. I mean, this is pretty cool. Like I can go into Config Manager and I can port over CIs and just yep. dump them in here now. And, and this is one more thing that I can use in Intune that I, instead of in Config Manager, one more thing that I can transition over. Um, yeah. It's still better together. I'm not saying one or the other, but. Exactly. I think <laughs> being it's able just to that, have it in one place is nice. Yeah. It's that one step closer uh, in that sort of maturity space that, um, you know, this was the one thing that I really, really have missed since moving fully over to Intune. Um, just that ability to, uh, yeah, to, to remediate on failures, you know? Um, yep. It's good. Uh, all right, so let's let's go to your machines now, I guess, and uh, and and do a sync or reboot them and and see if the script comes through. Well, let's let's get device status on here first, Ben, just to I'll just have a look. Yep. So nothing nothing yet, um, but that would be again probably because okay. uh, it hasn't done the thing. Well, I think we just lost Adam. No, he's just sharing a screen. 
Oh, lost video. Okay. And maybe audio. No, I'm here. Oh, I've just lost your video. It's all good. All good. Can you, do you have my um, feed? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I got, yep. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sharing, I'm running Teams through the browser because it doesn't like my microphone. So there's that. Um, all right. So here we go. So we'll go into the company portal and we'll do this cool thing or that one. Look, it's right there. Sync yep. this device. This computer hasn't been on in a long while. <laughs> it's still got the old company portal app icon. Yep. Oh, well, yeah. it'll get a couple things probably. This could be, uh, so let's, could be problematic. Oh, sorry, I'm not trying to do stupid things with the Windows. So they are doing it on their own. OK. Get the um, second machine. Oh, on the second here. machine, can you can you do the sync from uh, from, from the settings, settings gear? Yeah. Settings. yeah. Accounts. Because, and I mean, you know, if anyone from the product group is 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 uh, watching, uh, I find that this is more reliable. Am I correct, or am I just going insane? I just yeah. at least find that it provides more information that is useful for an yeah. IT person who's diagnosing the problem versus the company portal, which is probably geared towards the end user and maybe yeah. doesn't need to show all the same info. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that sentiment. I um, mean, the other thing as well is this uh, utilizes, as as I said at the, at, at the start, that it utilizes the sidecar uh, protocol. Um, and sometimes you can get a faster uh, turnaround if you uh, if you shut down the uh, the Intune management service and start it back up or reboot the computer. Um, yeah, and that's because every time that process starts up, it's going it to download again. the latest version. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have a new folder, and the sync is finished. Yeah, but it may be doing something now. Ben, we were talking about this beforehand, so there is a location on the machine where these scripts may get cached down? Yes, that is correct. So I believe the path is uh, in the in the Windows folder, C drive Windows. Um, there should be a folder called IME cache or cache. Yep, that one there. And then uh, health scripts. Um, so obviously this is gonna need to update. Now, actually this is interesting. Uh, what version of Windows 10 are these machines? Mm -hmm. A version of it? Yeah. What version of it? One of them. Okay, because uh, we are very limited on what we can run this on. It needs to be 1903 or higher. Well, these are 1909. Okay. Yep. Okay, should be fine. So it's just going to take its time. Obviously, so demo land. One, beat it out. Well, mm -hmm. and as we continually run into on uh, our deal here is we keep doing these on my machines yeah. in the U.S. and the the tenant is in Australia and probably just we're not getting policies quick enough. Yeah. Uh, so if we just wait, I'll just edit the silence. <laughs> we'll just come back. Oh, well, you won't. And we'll, you'll, you'll just get us staring at the screen. Yeah, we can do that too. It's good. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. This is going to be funny if this doesn't run. It will, it just might take some time. Yeah. Do you want to give one of the machines a reboot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this one has updates pending. And just start doing this before our... Uh, Oh, should, should I not in, log in with enhanced session too? Shouldn't matter. Hmm. 
I just realized something. What's that then? The, uh, the exit codes need to be the other way around. Oh, no. Really? For the detection yep. method? Apparently. I'm just looking at uh, Jake's uh, thing. Did he, 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 he calls that out in there? Uh, it doesn't explicitly call it out, but he says that uh, add VPN, uh, so the thing that he's doing is exit zero. Um, and then if, oh, hang on. No, no, no. I had it right. Of course you yeah, did. no. Of course I did. No, I had it right. That's fine. Ignore me. We always do. Okay, great. Sounds like Adam's having some food. Yeah, got me some trail mix up here. All right. By the way, this is all getting cropped out, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I have no problems with all this at this point. Okay, so while we wait. this other person's blog is wrong. Jax is right. Yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, so the PM on this is Abby. Okay. Yeah. Just so you're aware. Yeah, cool. Yeah. They they probably have some grand vision for why and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. Let me check on It's funny. It could actually like once it's deployed, take an hour to run. How do we know? Where does it get scheduled at? I don't know. And that's the thing, like it's not deployed to the machine at this point. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's okay. It's saying active now. The script is active? Yeah. This is the least healthy trail mix I've ever had in my entire life. What's in it? It's just, it's like dried fruit covered in sugar, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's the American way. Like yeah. sweetened banana chips. Like, do you need to make, you, like yes. pineapple, is pineapple, sugar, and citric acid? Yes, Adam. More. Sounds delicious. More. More refined sugar. It's always Coconut toffee cashews. That's cashew sugar and toasted tapioca syrup. Where's the uh, bacon? Yeah. I had that <laughs> on the pizza tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we had pizza last night. My nice gluten free bacon. pizza. Looks like uh, Victoria's uh, edging towards uh, getting out of their lockdown there, Benji. Oh, I don't believe it. Down to 37 right. cases today. Are you guys yeah. still in lockdown? Yeah. Like still only being able to leave the house one hour a day? Yeah. Um, you guys are actually abiding by that? I, I don't really. Like I've got everything I need is close by. So it doesn't, nothing really affects me. Um it's the can't leave the house past 8 p.m. is the uh, is the real kicker because famously uh, the coronavirus um, is more active at 8 p.m. till 5 a.m. Yeah, it's just harder to police. Yeah, I mean, hours. yeah, it's ridiculous. It's it's to give uh, the police and the military a break at the, in the evening like everybody else. From sure. patrolling from from patrolling the streets. They're not patrolling the streets. <laughs> no one's doing anything. People are doing whatever they want. The shops are packed. Oh yeah. Is that a helicopter? Sounds like it. Sweet. I'm out of here, you guys. Why isn't <laughs> this running? We're, we're, it's time to get on the helicopter. Your device will be restarted. Yeah. And, and shooting at people.
Ja, ja. Og skadet en ex-bunker. Did, <laughs> you see, did, you, did you see that link? Uh, no, I, I, I deleted them. I deleted Steve, them. do you have anything? What's that? Do you oh, have yeah. any VM for our tenant? Yes, I think so. Um, Ben, you did add me to those, add my machines to the... Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Right. 100%. Still can't minutes. believe you wouldn't actually use the group that we said. <laughs> so, um, did you see Julie posted the... Customer engineer, so that's their new, their new name, not PFE. Mm. Yes, that's correct. Mess into customer engineer. Um, they got an opening, and so it says it's in other other United States. Anyway, the city city state. <laughs> right. Yep. Do it, man. Apply. No, it says 50, 25 to fifty percent travel. Oof. I'm not doing that. My wife would shoot me. I don't like traveling that much. I mean, tell them you'll tele-travel. Like, no one's traveling in real life. Just well, I mean, the US, you know, for what it's worth, like, Julie says that she never travels for her clients. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it all, more... It all comes down to personal preference. Like, yeah, for us, if we want to travel every other weekend, or well, every other week, yeah, once we're can. allowed to travel again, we can. Yeah. Hey, did you guys find this cool button on your mouse? The one over by your thumb on the flat spot? Yeah, yeah it's not it's not the best. Um, yeah, but it does things. It does you do make things. it. If you install the Logitech, stuff. yeah. If you install the Logitech See? options app, you can actually um, reassign uh, the all the buttons on the mouse. Um, I've got the two side buttons to F5 and F8 uh, in VS Code, so I can run um, scripts. Oh, nice. It's really, really cool. Um, if this doesn't work, we can just, ugh, I don't know, we can just talk about it, but. No, it's going to work. It's just going to. It has to. It, it just takes, our tenant takes a long time for this stuff yeah. to work. Um, Anything Steve, that we do. Have, you, it, have just you got your VM? My two VMs yeah. uh, were the ones that didn't actually get enrolled into the tenant. Sure. So let me enroll them. Right. Yeah, I mean, I like I. Well, he's got to add you to the group though for it to yeah. work too. And oh, look, look, look! No, no, no! There it is. It works. Okay, sweet. Okay, there. that's good. Okay, so, so then let's... before we before we jump back in, let me just delete it. Okay, all scripts. Okay. And there it is. Okay, and there it and is. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, cool. Sweet. Okay, so then we'll jump back in. And so the time elapsed was like five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This one doesn't um, have it yet, but it'll come. Yeah, because it just did that update, right? Yeah. Okay, that's good. There we go. Do a big screen. And then do this one. Uh, and what's interesting is I still haven't got the, um, the policy hasn't returned back yet, um, which is fine. Well, yeah, because it's going to take a little bit to process. Yeah, you know, it'll probably be in the next hour. Like the next time it does the detection, it'll probably return the result back. Mm. Okay. Well, that's, right. I mean, I, so I'll sync it again while we're waiting or while we're talking through it. Yep. Um, okay. So then we'll just, I guess, cut back in here. Yep. Um, all right. I'll just start the sync and then we'll start talking. Cool. And then so, you can say, okay, Adam, we're back. And well, okay, we were it. looking, we were looking for the IME stuff, right? Uh, we well, yeah, let's just start. Yeah, we'll just start there and say, okay, hey, we so, waited. We, we're yeah. cutting back in. We took a break. Blah, yeah, blah, okay. whatever. So just keep it at that screen, and we'll we'll start. Okay, go ahead. All right. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. We we took a little break to wait for the sync to finish. Um, these virtual machines that we were running were quite old, and they had some updates that they needed to be done. Um, okay, so we've we've just done uh, a sync on this machine. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to show you where the um, the the actual code uh, that's run on the machine um, lives on your machine. So it's in C drive Windows. There's a folder called IME cache cache health scripts, and then there's this uh, GUID, uh, which is the 
this is actually the ID for the uh, for the app. Now, what Adam didn't show because he'd already clicked on it was uh, when you go into this, you need admin access to get to it. So yep. uh, it, if this one, well, if the other one comes up, I'll show it there. But it yeah, did prompt yeah. for admin credentials, and then it unlocked the folder for me. So it is so, like it is protected. secure, but it's important that we do this next bit. So just open up the detect in Notepad or whatever. Or ISC, I guess, is going to open. I haven't yep. seen this in so long. Yeah. Maybe you can like package up uh, VS Code to push down to all of our clients. Yeah, I can do that. Um, so, OK, um, the important thing that we're looking at here is this is obviously the code that ran in plain text, not encrypted. So if that payload had important information, like a password or a like a SAS key or, you know, anything, anything critical or even like a certificate hash or whatever. Um, it's potentially retrievable by people that maybe shouldn't see it. So the, the code that we're running here should just be basic health stuff. It should not be uh, business critical or, or contain any major secrets. Don't in your put environment. passwords and other Don't crazy put passwords. I mean, Follow the, same, that, yeah, really. follow the same uh, principles that you would follow anyway. Um, just, yeah, just understand that the code is there. It's there for the other stuff as well, but in the uh, in the uh, sidecar single script deployment solution, when the script finished, it would unload off the machine. In this scenario, it's deploying it to your machine and there's a schedule for it to run. So I'm assuming that if we set this to just run once, it'd probably wipe itself up. <laughs> And, and and clean up but so it oh, stays there on the machine yeah um and yeah. as i was saying that that id or the name of that folder is the GUID or the unique id object of the um of the policy that we're or the report i guess we're calling it yeah yes yeah um and that'll be in the same sidecar folder that the yep. uh, scripts exist in as well so my take is sweet uh it's sweet time um, so, but yeah, so that's that's it in a nutshell. So what's going to happen now is if if Adam deleted that folder in an hour, uh, it would run that detection method, it would find that it's missing, and it would reinstate it. Um, what that means is that we have um, yet another level of control over our devices, um, and our end users can do whatever they want, and we're going to clean up after them, basically. Now, uh, before we go, let me ask the question about, like, so we talked about securing these things and not putting sensitive information in them, but then there's also the question of, um, you know, what do we do about um, signing with a cert? Um, how does that, I think that I was reading that if you sign the script, you, do you need this, do you need the cert on your machine yes. um, to validate against? Basically, you need to have the or the root CA it was signed against root slash trusted root uh, slash left slash intermediary certificate on the yeah. machine. So let me uh, let me actually not the certificate that signed it, but the uh, the tr uh, trust chain for the certificate that signed it. Yeah, there is actually uh, a, a thing here. Where is it? Okay. Actually, let me let me share my screen because this is kind of interesting. Okay. Um, well, so before for, sorry, before you, look, I know I took us down a tangent while I was waiting for the search <laughs> to load. So here yeah. it is. Before we go, yeah. Um, so here's the I just searched for the folder GUID for the app, yeah. and so now we can see last execution is 411. That, yeah. And so if we were hackers, we could hack this date and probably just convince it to run again and that's manually. UTC time there. Yeah, there it is. is. Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, you can see that this is in the Intune management extension uh, folder, right? So, oh, and look at that. Yeah, we have a result too, which this should be the result in JSON form that it's going to yep. return back up to the uh, server for us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If I had something like VS Code, it would make it look pretty. Here, Ben, will... I'll send it over to you in the chat, and you okay, can, great. when you share your screen, do cool things with it. All right, so, sweet. Stop, uh, Ben. You want to start sharing? Yep, yep, yep. I'll share my screen. Uh oh. Why well, I unshared my screen and I lost audio. I thought we were in no, that's, again. All that's all good. And you that's may want to share your video again. Uh, yeah, I'll do it again. No, no, uh, uh, Adam. The camera. Oh, yeah. Turned off. Camera. <sighs> Can't win with this computer right now. I swear. <laughs> okay. I copy that into the chat if you haven't already.
I'm working on it. It locked me out of my machine. I had it in not enhanced mode, so then I couldn't <laughs> copy and paste out. So I'm having to switch back over and all the fun things. So while uh, Adam's doing that, Ben, do you want to go back to the Intune portal? Yeah. I will do that right now. Oh yeah, so, okay, let's, before we go into the JSON stuff, I just wanted to show you. Um, so we're quickly talking about code signing. Um, if we are in the uh, endpoint manager portal, we go into tenant administration, uh, and then we go into connectors and tokens. Um, up here, we've got uh, Windows Enterprise Certificate. This is the code signing certificate. So if we have this, it deploys the code signing certificate out to our machines. Um, don't ask me how to get a code signing certificate. I believe that costs money uh it's it's a thing if you need to sign code uh you get that um if you need to know how yeah. to sign code you so can generate one from your pki environment as well mm -hmm. yeah you, you can generate it from your pki but this is for um distributing line of business apps uh That's it good. is but it should be the same thing no so no okay well let's just cut that from the thing um, um, that's okay. I'm leaving so, it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, let's let's go to this. Let's go to this. All right, so Adam's just <laughs> We're copied. just going to just run away from that one. Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to show line. you something else in the portal. Okay, show me something else in the portal. <laughs> tell oh, me boy. tell me where to go. Slow uh, down. Uh, Slow down, intern. Slow down. Okay. Show me. What am I doing? All of that information. So now let's go back to the reports. Yeah, gotcha. And then endpoint analytics. Yeah and select our proactive remediations. Ooh, look at this. Yeah, and we select that bad boy. So we had a machine with issues, uh, but we also have a machine that's uh, resolved that. So next time this runs, we should get zero with issues. So this is a live report. Um, that's correct. Which is a big thing. Well, we that should I wanna... get one without issues. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. We should have yeah, and, one and, and zero yeah. with issues. Exactly. Um, um, and then if you go to device status, you'll see both of the computers. So the other one so just hasn't pulled back. Yeah, that's right. So it's not 100% live report. Yeah. Um, it just takes time to process through. Yeah, that's really good. Cool. And, and that's, that's sorry, be Ben. Um, I, so I've lost your screen and I for just to ensure that we don't have a repeat from last I've week. Can you still. unshare and reshare? It's gone yeah. mostly grayed out, I can see a couple of things, but it Ooh. could just be my machine, but I don't want to lose another video. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> there we go, much better. That's better. All right, let me just move this across. Cool, All right. well, I cool. think we're so pretty much done anyway. Yeah. Well, let's... so go back to the VS Code screen and let's take a peek then. So, so this, this is, is what it sent payload. back. Yeah, so we've got the policy ID, the user ID, um, internal version, blah, 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 remediation detection, Warning, it's Adam's fault. So, so the error message actually did. So the output of the error popped out. So you could uh, you could use this for really good troubleshooting or to be sassy. Um, I think that's kind of cool. Um, so the interesting got... thing is pre and post remediation. Yeah. So what it's actually doing is running the detection method. Is it still a problem? Remediate and then it's rerunning the yeah. post remediation. That's really, really the cool. Uh, the, the detection method afterwards. Yeah. So it it returned it. It knows the difference between a, a a failed detection and an error in the detection. And yes. that's really neat too. It so is, it is it is actually catching all of those pieces. And so I think that even lends more to the make sure that your code is properly formatted because it's going to give you some rich information yeah. back. I don't know how much of this makes it. You know, visible inside of the console versus how much of this you could pull. I suspect this is probably in graph um, that you could go and pull the details um, of that. But at least it's on the client side if you needed to see more details than what's being shown. Yeah, in the for sure. There. So, um, the other key thing to flag before we wrap up is that um, uploading scripts uh, for our policy remediation stuff is now available in graph. It does have a new endpoint. Um, so it's not that it's obviously not using the same endpoint as just the device management scripts, um, but it does mean that we can uh, we can programmatically put that stuff up there. So 
I envisage a, a time fairly soon where we can get the CI stuff from Config Manager and just pipe it straight into uh, Inchune. So that oh. lends it even closer to. Oh, go go back, go back, go back to the, the console. I just um, okay. click on columns. We missed it. It's sitting there right in front of us. Oh, Check what's... all the boxes. All right, this is cool. Let's scroll over. It's Adam's fault. So but look Adam's how cool fault. this is, guys. So what is, you oh, can put what? some really good information and like use this as some basic... Re I mean, this is literally reporting. Hey, this, this is, is why incredible. it's under the reporting note, right? Yeah. That's cool. I yep. love this. This is so good. And note that, okay, so this said warning because I said write warning. So if we just did an output, it would say output. But like, well, that's the, that's the hey, there, um, hey, it's working. Yeah, hey, it's yeah, there, yeah, 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 yeah. Right exactly. at the end, because that was a write host. Yeah, exactly. This is this is really really cool. I'm going to be using this a lot more. Some scenarios that I imagine, like right now, using. Um, I've I've got a couple of clients who um, have third-party VPN clients or we, no, actually there's an even better one that we're deploying and configuring a VPN using a PowerShell script. Uh, we can only currently do that like once. What if we wanted to change that? Or what if we wanted to modify that? We could simply just do a, a, um, a remediation, remediation script on that. And then it's always going to be up to date. And we're going to, you know, if there's any errors, we've, we've got that. Um, I'm going to be using this a lot. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I think this was uh, hugely successful, so it probably I shouldn't so belong too. on the channel. But um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, we're going to include all the links and all the cool bits in the uh, blog. I mean, in the the, the description. Um, so just keep watching the space because it's going to keep getting cooler. And I think we're going to keep seeing uh, blog content come out about it as people come up with uh, new and clever ways to uh, remediate things. And so good stuff. Well done, Ben. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. See you. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Um...